to welcome you to uh, APM Live's web webinar on getting more from your project server deployment. Uh, my name is Rich Murphy. I'm one of the, the solution specialists um, in the uh, EPM Live team. So for today's agenda, um, I'm going to give you just a very brief background on EPM Live, the company, uh, and what our product line is. Um, and we'll be spending most of the presentation on how EPM Live enhances Project Server. Uh, and I'm also going to go over one specific customer's implementation. So first of all, EPM Live is a managed Microsoft partner. Uh, we've been gold certified since 2000. Uh, we have actually implemented approximately 500 Project Server deployments. Uh, and we've also been a technical advisor for Microsoft on all project and project server implementations, uh, beginning with Project 2002 uh, and on through the EPM Project Server 2010 uh, system. Um, we have over a thousand customers in 35 different countries, uh, and we have a wide range of industry experience uh, covering IT, engineering, pharmaceutical, construction, aerospace, etc. Uh, we were recognized in 2008, 9, and 10 by Inc. 500 as one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies. Um, we take special pride in the fact that we were Microsoft's EPM Partner of the Year in uh, four out of the last uh, five years. Uh, and we also uh, got the PMI Project of the Year Award in 2006 and 2007. Um, we have partners uh, in uh, many countries, over 150 total partners. Uh, this is the only slide I'm going to be showing that explains the um, what our product suite is. Uh, essentially, we are providing project portfolio and work management solutions for all types of organizations and every level of property in project and portfolio management. Uh, beginning with our project engine uh, product, which is a hosted software as a service solution uh, that allows individual project managers to collaborate with their teams. Uh, moving on uh, to the work engine and portfolio engine products, which is what we'll be talking about and showing today and discussing today. Um, those are products that are aimed at working in an enterprise type of environment. Uh, enterprise referring here to functionality, uh, not size, but people who want visibility across multiple projects uh, executives, uh, resource managers, line managers, project managers, and the actual resources um, on any project or any work. And that's the big um, differentiator which we'll be concentrating on uh, today. Uh, the portfolio Engine product is our top line product. Basically, has resource management, uh, cost and modeling. I hate to say it, but it actually seems to have stopped. Let's go to next. Okay. I'll have to go that way. So first, we're going to talk about some of the strengths of Project Server. Um, several of us, by the way, were actually involved in with Microsoft in the design of uh, Project Server uh, in 2002 and 2003. Um, one of the big advantages of Project Server, uh, if all of you are users on the webinar, uh, is the fact that it has an enterprise global that enforces the company standards so you don't have different project managers using different fields or uh, doing things in different ways so that upper management can't see what uh, is happening overall with any degree of consistency. Another big advantage which this particular customer will be talking about today uh, took advantage of is the fact that there's no limit on the number of enterprise custom fields um, whereas there are limits on the number of technical uh, uh, local fields. Uh, also, um, Project Server is completely integrated with SharePoint and creates SharePoint workspaces for each project. 
and the um, another strength which we ourselves take advantage of and many partners and uh, customers do also is that the system can be extended via the project server API interface. So now let's talk about how EPM Live and, it, and our work engine and portfolio engine product line uh, enhances Project Server. Um, one of the most fundamental uh, items is we have a concept called all work, which I'll explain more you know, in a moment. Um, many of our customers have implemented our system with Project Server because it provides cost and financial management capabilities on a time phase basis, um, much, much more than just a simple, this is how much a task is going to cost. Um, another thing about cost and financial management is the fact that most times budgets are prepared long before you have a detailed project plan. We provide a top-down way of handling cost management and the ability to roll up costs and resource requirements from your project server schedules. We also provide a very comprehensive resource planning facility. Um, again, that operates in both a top-down and a bottoms-up mode. Um, one thing which several of our customers have taken advantage of is the fact that these cost resource management and other functions can be applied to any SharePoint list. Um, for many project server customers, one of the things that um, they find very attractive is the fact that we're enhancing the system by requiring uh, by not requiring that everything has to be a project, a task, and a resource assignment. For the projects that are being scheduled with Microsoft Project Professional and Project Server, um, we take advantage of that, but you can actually do a budget on a document, for example, or you could do a resource plan on a major change order that a customer gives you. Um, we have a series of web parts, uh, templates, reports, and dashboards which come with the system. Um, and which you can easily modify. Uh, and those templates can operate with one of our web parts, the GridCamp roll-up web part, uh, to produce cross-project views. So you can see all the issues on all of your projects, all of the change orders and how they relate, and all of the schedule information rolled up uh, to um, a total view. Um, we also provide the ability to uh, not only publish from Microsoft Project um, by enhancing what Project Server does with its publishing facility, but you can also publish uh, to using Excel. Uh, and more recently, we've introduced an Outlook publisher, which allows you to take all of the work for any individual, and he or she can actually work with that uh, inside of Outlook. Uh, so you can update your uh, project information and your issues and document status information using Outlook. So here's what we mean by the concept of all work. Um, this slide was actually developed many years ago by one of the leading industry analysts. Um, and the actual numbers haven't really varied very much over the years. Um, the important thing to see here is that projects that have major schedules in many organizations, particularly in the IT and in soft project, um, such as research and development or pharmaceutical, in terms of the total effort, they basically consume about 25 to 35 percent of the total effort of the resources in the organization. Uh, um, operations and support, particularly in IT organizations, uh, usually consumes more than 50% of the work. And of course, you do have administrative and non-working time, uh, holidays, vacations, et cetera. Um, and also, most organizations don't just stick to the plan they started at the beginning of the fiscal year. New ideas come along all the time. They have to be evaluated. They may or may not be approved. Um, the one thing that's very different from project management as applied many years ago in the engineering, construction, and aerospace field, and today's project management situation and environment is the fact that things are constantly changing. Resource management and financial management has become a much cri more critical aspect of the project and portfolio management uh, situation. And that's one of the reasons Microsoft developed Project Server. 
So EPM Live extends the concept of work beyond projects, tasks, and resources, uh, resource assignments, that is. Um, many of our customers create change order logs, um, create deliverables logs, have extensions to the issues and risk logs that come with, um, with Project Server, uh, want to handle service requests, um, help desk tickets, etc. Because we are working on any SharePoint list, and because we can assign people to any item in that list and have the functions of EPM Live apply to any of those lists, um, we get the ability to basically take all the data that's in Project Server and combine it with the other things that are going on in the organization and allow people to work with one single SharePoint interface. Uh, this is how how Project Server and EPM Live um, are actually synchronized. Uh, Project Server has its own database, which contains draft, publish, reporting, and archive uh, data tables. And users interact with Project Server using either Microsoft Project or the Project Web Access uh, function. We synchronize the data from Project Server over to SharePoint and include the ability to handle issues, actions, bugs, uh, agile backlogs, for example, uh, changes, deliverables, defects, again, anything that is a, represented by a SharePoint list. And all users can interact, including those project managers, by the way, can interact with uh, directly with SharePoint. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that were done with um, one of our customers who uh, has been using the system now for 18 months, a little over 18 months. Um, they are a major telecommunications firm covering multiple states. Um, very experienced Microsoft Project and Project Server users in their organization and in their PMO. Um, they implemented the system and came to us in July of 2010 because they had to meet certain critical regulatory schedule requirements or suffer staggering penalties in the range of millions of dollars. The results were that by using the resource management capabilities of Portfolio Engine, they were able to achieve efficiencies and actually improve the efficiency of their union labor organization. Uh, and in fact, the union labor organization was actually pleased because the, um, the efficiencies that resulted meant less use of non-union labor to meet the schedules. I should mention that this organization uh, started out uh, using the system in an engineering and construction environment, the erection of cell towers and data lines being run to major businesses, uh, and has since expanded it to other functions in engineering and will soon be expanding it to their IT department. Uh, they met the schedules that they had to meet by the end of 2010, suffered no penalties, uh, actually finish certain of the major projects ahead of schedule. Um, their usage, as I said, has been expanded to other groups. Uh, and they are running in the EPM Live software as a service uh, hosted environment. So let's look at some of the specific things uh, that they've done. The first thing uh, that I just wanted to point out is much of what we're doing and what they're doing um, is being done through um, a publish uh, a publisher enhancement that um, we call it enterprise publishing um, that has been added to uh, the project server environment uh, and we do add uh, this uh, dialogue here and this ability to the site settings for uh, the project web access uh, application uh, in essence what we're doing is we are back ending the publish that is done by project server so you don't have to actually invoke two functions once you say that you're ready to save and publish your project. Our publishing takes over and does all of the enhanced publishing that is required. Uh, I apologize for the fact that this customer doesn't want uh, their name or their specific names of their projects revealed. Uh, so I've had to redline you know, those projects out. But this, this slide here is actually showing you, uh, this is a SharePoint view. Um, this view has the GridGant EPM Live Web part uh, superimposed on the SharePoint list. 
that's what enables us to collapse proposed and active projects, for example. That's also what enables us to show Gantt views, um, and it's also what enables us to show the graphical indicators for schedule, budget, uh, issue, and risk status, uh, as an example. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, SharePoint um, and with Project Server, what we're doing here is allowing you to create conditional fields and instead of publishing and viewing those conditional fields with their value, we're allowing you to show a graphical indicator, which is a, a graphical file, a GIF file, um, for the various status uh, pieces of information. Um, the grid gang control is used extensively uh, in the system. Many users have it invoked for any view. And you can customize the behavior of the grid gang control um, because it is a SharePoint web part. Uh, what I've done here is I have drilled into a specific project. Um, in this application, the customer, when they drill into any project or workspace, actually sees seven uh, web parts from EPM Live. One is showing the project health, which is the one up at the top. Um, one is showing details by location uh, for specific um, tasks in the project, the key summary tasks. Uh, only, uh, and there are also financial uh, web parts uh, and others that are being that are being shown. Um, the the highlight here that I've made is that the SharePoint list for the details of each location, um, essentially, what they are doing is using a project server template for erection of a cell tower, as one specific example, which has about 35 tasks in it, and they are duplicating that template so that a project in Project Server might have 10 locations. The template also allows the user, the template we provided to them and customized and configured, allows them to put a lot of detailed information, um, such as who the customer is, um, what the um, internal accounting codes are, interfaces to their um, accounting system uh, are in there. there are this is one of the reasons that Project Server became so important to them, is they have about 50 custom fields. Um, many of them are dates and text fields, and local fields in Project wouldn't be able to handle this. So we have created a custom list for them that applies to only certain summary tasks. And then we have developed some project code that basically update those tasks based on certain conditions being met. So here is the uh, project server template. Uh, I said it had 35 tasks. It actually has 34. Um, some things about this. Um, if a job or a project in Microsoft Project Server has 10 locations, it will actually have 10 sets of these tasks. So it will have 340 pro uh, project tasks. Okay. The, um, the, uh, through the use of editing, they they identify where you see 1A. They change that to the specific location name globally. Um, and the um, important thing here is that the field that has been added, which is an enterprise text field called report code, that code is actually being used to drive some management reporting. Um, they represent statuses for both the baseline and the actual achievement. Okay, And we've developed a some project code that actually takes the current status of the individual detail tasks and rolls the dates up to the uh, to the uh, top of each location. That that so we're basically updating about 30 fields that are date fields to give them the status, um, and that status information is being kept in a time phase fashion so they can compare where they are versus where they think they should be. Um, across what amounts to hundreds and sometimes thousands of locations. Uh, one of the big uses of the system is they want everybody in the field. Um, they want everybody in the home office. And they even want the customer, um, which are major telecommunications firms like AT&T and Verizon, they want those firms to be able to go in and see what's the status 
of their job by location. Um, here, the enterprise publishing capability uh, that we mentioned is actually being used and allowing customers and senior management to see but not edit the detail status. Using that grid Gantt control, they can also switch and see, um, in this case, you know, a Gantt mode and uh, look at the data. Uh, again, due to the security policy they put in effect, people can't edit this. Um, one rather unusual um, situation that this customer has is the resources that are being applied to the Microsoft Project schedules are actually not individuals, but construction crews. So they may have a splice crew, which has two people, or a line crew, which might have three people. So all of their resource management is being done by these crews or um, specific types of, of, of groups. And therefore, the reporting that is required is actually for a field construction supervisor. And what that field construction supervisor does is, I'll go back here, there is a special view which only the field construction supervisor or his delegate has access to, and he or she actually goes into that special uh, task list from there from a browser and actually updates the status uh, of individual tasks. And then when the project manager opens his or her project, they actually receive that information. They receive a notification that some updating has been done and they can approve it uh, and accept it and apply it to the project plan. So this is not the typical situation where a resource assignment and a resource on that project is actually doing the updating of tasks for the project manager. Um, it's actually a specific named individual who is responsible for a job or a location, and that person is basically doing the updating. Uh, another important thing, and this is for the people um, in another group, um, based on the success that they had in another engineering group, uh, the network architecture team, um, they do have specific individuals in the engineering group that are uh, assigned to things, and they make use of an EPM Live um, web part, which we call the My Work Web to web part, uh, and that shows Every time they go in, their home page shows all the things that are overdue, all the things that are due this week, all the things that are due this month, all the things that are in the future. So they have a very timely way of being able to see the status and feedback data to the project manager. Uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier is um, we've, we have additional publishing capability besides just publishing back ending the project server enterprise publishing. Uh, we also have an Excel publisher which customers can use um, so that if you um, use Excel to keep track of things and you want to status those, um, you can do it with our Excel publisher. And recently we've introduced an Outlook publisher uh, which actually synchronizes my work which can have issues, risks, tasks, documents, uh, change orders in addition to project server tasks. Uh, and that will appear in Outlook, in your Outlook task list, and you can update uh, all the data right from within Outlook. I wanted to show you some of the special things that we've done for this uh, customer. Again, I've had to blank out the, uh, the names of their projects, but um, because their projects are so big, a project sometimes could have multiple locations and um, 50 locations perhaps, and so it'll be rather large, but, but management wants to know how are we doing overall on a time phase basis, okay? How many, how many projects or how many locations are at the stage where the cell tower is ready to be constructed? Uh, how many are through engineering? Uh, how many are awaiting customer approval? Uh, what we've done here is, is take you, make use of the enterprise uh, task level fields in project server and we're actually counting the number that should be done as of a certain point in time and that's what you see so for the pre-planning phase on this overall program there should be 394 items at that stage um, 
for the planning done phase, there should be seven. For engineering pre-requirement stage, there should be 459. And then we are publishing um, out to uh, our portfolio engine product. We're actually publishing um, a special what we call cost type that is actually calculating the number of things that actually have been accomplished um, in a specific period of time. So the current values are shown here on the left, and then the individual periodic values are being shown in a time phase way on the right. And if I expanded that phase count, I could actually see what the details are for each uh, point in the process. And then management, um, this happened to be a, um, a report that several people would actually go in and prior to using Portfolio Engine and Project Server, they had to do this all by hand. And they had two, sometimes three people a week doing nothing but going into all the detailed plans, looking at and counting up things, um, putting it into some Excel spreadsheet, and then producing these graphs. We were able to duplicate that so that that process is completely automated now. Uh, I'm going to go beyond because the customer asked us not to show um, any of their costs and resources. Um, in, I'm going to go and just show here um, how we have enhanced project service ability to handle financial and cost management and resource management. Um, the first thing you'll notice is here I have selected a particular project, the DV, Xbox DVD upgrade. And the arrows are pointing to functions, EPM Live functions, that have been added to the ribbon, one for cost planning, one for capacity planning, um, and another for scenario modeling. Those are the three that I'm going to go over you know, and explain briefly. So here's what the first one looks like. Um, when you say, I want to prepare a budget or do anything in cost management, up at the top, is the editable portion, um, and I have actually two cost types shown here. One is the actual budget, and the other is actual cost. Each of those are separate tabs. In this particular case, I clicked on the show reference, so at the bottom of the uh, view, I'm actually seeing but cannot edit the actual cost to date. Um, I should mention that um, it's fairly typical for people to have quite a few cost types. Um, sometimes we have customers that have nine or ten different cost types because they have an original budget, which only goes to the labor material and services component. Uh, then they break down a more detailed budget, in this case by type of labor, business analyst, DBA developer, etc. Uh, and then they might have forecasting that's due on a quarterly or a monthly basis, and each of those are separate cost types. Um, one thing we pay a lot of attention to is feedback from our customers, and the show reference capability was actually feedback from a customer who said, wouldn't it be nice if I could see my forecast from the last quarter while I'm doing the forecast for this quarter um, going forward? And we've added that capability. I should mention that the categorization here, totals, labor, uh, et cetera, and the breakdown by type of labor or role, um, that is entirely up to each customer. Uh, the uh, periods of time, October, November, 2011, et cetera, um, those are also defined by the customer. And we do accommodate um, the, uh, a fiscal month uh, system where you have four weeks in January, four weeks in February, five weeks in March, et cetera, uh, 445 fiscal system, which the government and people like Microsoft themselves actually use. Uh, and here we're also showing the fact that we can put in quantities. Um, I could also display instead of the man hours, which is being displayed here, I could display a head count or I could display percentage of time. Uh, and you'll notice that the cost is being calculated here also because there is a very comprehensive time phase rating capability uh, in the system, which allows you to do your budget in the early days strictly by labor material and other and then get down to the level of specific types of labor. You can also have contractor and, um, and employee uh, categorizations. And a very common question we get uh, these days is, can you delineate between capital and expense uh, types of costs? The answer is yes. Uh, 
Okay, so the next uh, slide I'm showing is uh, resource management and how we handle that. Um, those of you who are uh, familiar with Project Server know that uh, Project Server has the ability to actually have uh, resource calculations and roll up um, all the data um, from the detailed task level. What we have found is that there's a demand, uh, which we're meeting, for the ability before, long before the project has the uh, detailed project manager assigned and detailed tasks and resources assigned, there's a desire to, to do high-level resource planning at the project level. And that's what we're showing here. Um, the top half of the screen is actually showing the demand. So the one I've highlighted, for example, is showing that I need an infrastructure person uh, 40 hours each month, okay? Uh, and that amount could vary, of course. Um, the bottom half of the screen is showing the um, each of the people that have been identified, um, and there are several ways to put people at the bottom of the list, it's showing their actual availability for considering all the work that they're doing. That includes work that they're doing on this project, work they're doing on other projects, work they're doing for operations and support or new initiatives, and we also take into account um, the time off that they may have. So the system um, will actually show they're on vacation for two weeks in July, as an example. So that's why we call that the remaining or, quote, real availability. Okay. Um, so how the negotiation works is that the project manager um, or the manager who needs the resources fills in the top and says, I need somebody from this department, I need a developer, and here's how much of their time I need for this project. The project manager um, then basically posts a request to um, the manager of that department when he saves the, um, the, uh, the uh, estimate. And the department manager who has control of the resources uh, can actually simply look and see who's available by clicking the match button, in which case it matches up people that have the right skill, sees what their real availability is, and then can assign the person uh, to the project manager. Now, one of the questions we get asked all the time is, well, what's the difference between that type of an assignment to the project and the detailed task assignments that are being made in Microsoft Project and Project Server? And here's the answer. We keep both of those. We keep the bottoms-up estimate and the bottoms-up requirements for uh, the Microsoft Project schedule and roll that up. And we also have this top-down planning uh, at the project level because that way we're able to show in time phase views, you plan to use Rich for 80 hours for the next three months. But due to a schedule change, his, his requirement has shifted out by six weeks. That causes me as Rich's manager a problem because now I have nothing that Rich was planned to do uh, for six weeks, uh, but also you've pushed his work into the future. Um, it was actually one of the industry analysts, one of the leading analysts in portfolio and project management who, who pointed out to us that the real problem being faced by many organizations is the fact that as things change, the person who first finds out about the change and the fact that they're overloaded is the resource when in fact the line manager and the project managers should be the ones who know about it. So we're able to actually do this by using this negotiation tool. Uh, there is also a mode of this dialogue that you see here which will actually bring the Microsoft Project Schedule requirements into the bottom of the screen so that the two managers can negotiate and see what the differences are. Uh, and just a couple of things to point out. Um, one of the problems facing many managers is the fact that uh, people do leave the organization or get promoted and move to other parts of the of the organization. So I've just highlighted here the fact that we keep track of the fact that Todd Toe uh, on that infrastructure work as a system architect was assigned originally and Han Mu has taken over because Todd left the company. Also notice we keep track of the fact that changes have been made uh, and the work that was previously estimated at 80 hours in October and November uh, has now grown to 120. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that um, we get asked all the time, and executives are the ones who usually answer this, is uh, um, 
we have yet to see um, an IT department in particular that has more than enough resources and budget to do all the things they're being asked to do. So their question from executives stuff is shown up in what we call the create stage. Um, you could rename that to proposed if you wish. Um, but there's five projects that are being considered here and those five projects um, don't have any budget yet but possibly may have resource plans and can we do all this with the people that we have and if alternatives. So we, we provide uh, in EPM Live and Portfolio Engine a scenario modeling tool um, which the top is showing each of the projects and all of the operational work and the new initiatives and the things being considered and showing their schedule and by unchecking the boxes on the left I can delete those from the scope and the numbers at the bottom will change so you can see here that this organization if they want to do all this work has problems with project managers uh, in November and December um, and actually it continues into January just at a lesser degree as indicated by the yellow um, and they have problems with developers, DBAs, infrastructure and system architects so um, I can uh, decide to delay some projects by moving the bars in which case the bottom will show what the effect is. I can stretch things out, um, support and operations work, I can decide to work at half the rate I was planning. Uh, I can obviously cancel projects by unchecking the boxes. Um, I could also go in and say, what if I hire some additional contractors? What happens if I get some DBAs and infrastructure people from outside to do this work? We allow you to have multiple scenarios, uh, multiple versions of each scenario. Um, this is a part of the system that's meant to be used by senior management at a high level, uh, not every day, but on their normal review cycle as things are changing. Um, one of the things that, that actually makes um, the EPM Live Work Engine and Portfolio Engine um, products unique is the fact that rather than start with a blank space, uh, we provide you with pre-built workspace templates. So those templates have views, reports, uh, dashboards, um, workflows built into them and we provide them, um, you're free to use them, um, we provide them for things like following the normal PMBOK requirements, uh, we provide one for Agile, um, Microsoft Solutions Framework, professional services product development and we're constantly adding uh, to those so you can get going fairly quickly um, because we're providing you with a lot of intellectual property in the form of the templates, reports and dashboards. Uh, this is what one of them looks like. Um, so notice that here um, I've, I've got a bunch of announcements. There aren't any right here. Um, I've got that My Work um, item shown off on the left uh, in the middle, which is showing all the overdue stuff, the stuff due this month, stuff due in the future. Uh, Project Health off on the right-hand side. So this comes out of the box um, simply by using um, one of our templates. And finally, I just wanted to point out that um, one of the, uh, the integration with uh, Project Server um, is very tight. Here I'm looking at uh, a project uh, task list and I can up at the top in the red highlight there, I could decide, okay, right from here I want to edit this using Project Professional or I want to edit it in the Project Web Access app, okay, application. So, the key to what we're doing is everything is a SharePoint list. People can be assigned to any list item. My work allows you to, to see um, in Outlook or in SharePoint all the things you as a resource are assigned to. Um, we provide pre-built templates for many types of projects, uh, reports and dashboards. And then we're providing comprehensive cost and financial management and resource management uh, to complement and add to the project scheduling and project management capabilities of Project Server. And I think that's uh, the end. I think I'm going to ask our organizer
if he or she is on to uh, perhaps make some closing comments or 